Papa, now cool down. Oh, sure. Count it, Finn. Count it! I'm so plum mad I can't see straight. Two thousand dollars. That's for you all boys. But you gotta kill Shotgun Gibbs first. Right here in Tombstone? Right here, and I'll tell you where he is. He's over in Pat McGinn's livery stable. Are you sure? He's in there, currying that mule. One more thing. Kill the mule, too. We'll get them both, Papa. Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Wyatt Earp helped John Clum start the Tombstone Epitaph because he wanted an honest newspaper. His next move was to try to elect an honest judge. Well, Spicer, lately arrived from the East, was chosen to run against Judge Griscom. And since Griscom was allied with the Clantons and with the infamous 10% ring, beating him at the polls would not be a political fight. It would be a battle with fists and guns, for which the term dirty politics was too mild a name. You know we agreed to come on down here and help Marshal Earp. Yeah, I know, I know. There ain't no peace in Tombstone, but there wasn't no peace in Wyoming either. So, by George, you just behave yourself and get on along then. Don't give me no more of your trouble. Oh, go down, Rosco. Not too close. Rosco don't like strangers. Call that Canon Roscoe, friend? No, friend. Roscoe's my mule. The ten gauge ain't got no name. <laughs> he ain't as bad as he looks, Hank. How'd you like to earn ten dollars? What doing? Voting ten times tomorrow. Who for? Judge Criscom. Ask him, does he know how to vote? Yeah, you just asked me an insulting question like that, and the four of us are going to tangle. Four? Yeah, me and my mule. He's better than a strong man in a rough and tumble. Bites and kicks harder. Sure, sure. How about it? You want to earn that ten dollars? Well, I ain't got no objection to voting ten times, but I ain't even a resident of Tombstone. Well, here are your credentials. Title to a city lot and a hotel bill at Nellie Cashman's. We think of everything, friend. Is that so? Well, there's one thing you ain't thought of. What's that? The ten dollars. Well, how do we know you'll vote? It's... No, it's all right. Never mind. Here's your ten dollars. Well, I'm much obliged to you. Let's go, Roscoe. Man. Man, is he green. <laughs> Just the way we like him. I never made a political speech in my life. I'm just telling you medical facts. Nate Griscom has a heart like a chicken's gizzard. <laughs> it's my personal and professional opinion that Nate has rocks where his brain ought to be. <laughs> uh, the only other thing wrong with Griscom is that the sand in his craw is plain mud. That's what I think of Judge Griscom. I don't know Well, Spicer, his opponent, professionally, but if Mr. Spicer was a yellow dog, I'd vote for him against Griscom. Well, Roscoe, I guess that's about the best political speech we ever did here, ain't it? Well, that's all I've got to say. Vote for Spicer! Shut 
Shotgun. Hello, Wyatt. Shotgun, good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you. Roscoe. Roscoe, how are you? Just mule in the whole world. Mind if I kiss him? I sure do mind. I don't figure it'd be too manly either of you. I won't kiss you, but it sure is good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you, Wyatt. Listen, you've got, a, you've got an office around here so we can talk spell. Inside, come on. Well, that's about it, Wyatt. I took a bribe to vote ten times for a man whose heart looks like a chicken's gizzard. I guess I'd better go look up them scouts and give them their ten dollars back. No, sir. How's that? Mr. Gibbs, there are ten precincts in this town. I want you to take that money. I want you to vote for Judge Griscom in each of those ten precincts, just like they wanted you to. Yeah, just hold on, boy. You ain't changed, have you? Well, a little. See, Tombstone's a lot rougher town than Dodge City ever thought of being. I'm up against a sizable crowd of outlaws here. Them Clantons? Mm -hmm. I told Roscoe that when I heard you had pinned on a star. Speaking of stars, where's mine? comes after the election. We're trying to get a crook off the judge's bench. What do you want me to go down there and vote ten times for Griscom for? Well, if they're going to play rough, we're going to have to play rough. I want to try and catch Clanton and Judge Griscom in an election fraud. You hang on to that phony title and the hotel bill. We'll need them later. Oh, I get it. I'm going to be your stool, is that it? Well, I hope it works out that way. It really won't be illegal. I'm swearing you in as a special deputy. But what about Roscoe? He had his supper? Well, that mule can wait. I ain't had my supper. Mr. Gibbs, the big battle starts tomorrow, and I don't want you to be a marked man yet. You're going out the back door at Nellie Cashman's hotel. I'll take Roscoe on over to the stable. I told that mule, I said, oh, it's going to be in trouble, I said. Well, that's all right. Trouble's better than peace. It still proves to me you're your own man. Dr. Goodfellow, you're Miss Cashman. Mr. Gerd, you know this town, the miners, a lot better than I do. Now, if you think challenging illegal voters at the polls is better, then I'm all for it. But I think the best strategy might be let Clanton, Griscom, think that they're stealing the election and then get them for it. Why? Excuse me, but uh, Spicer isn't here. You don't suppose he's been bushwhacked, do you? I'll let Dr. Goodfellow tell you about that. Well, Spicer has ethics. He wouldn't beg votes for a judicial office. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's a good man. Well, I just hope that you and Spicer know what you're doing, Wyatt. I won't order my miners out of vote, you know. Well, I think Wyatt's right, but I think we ought to put the matter of tactics to a vote. Let's have a vote. All those in favor of watching the polls, raise your hand. All those in favor of Marshal Earp's plan? Aye. Aye. It's Aye. unanimous. Aye. Good. We'll let the Clanton stuff the ballot boxes. Fine. Uh, since Miss Nellie Cashman is our election clerk, she'll have possession of the boxes. Well, there's one other thing, uh, Dr. Goodfellow. The election judges, they uh, should know every person that's entitled to vote. Who are the judges? Well, Mr. Gerd, me. Well, that's fair enough. Well, then, gentlemen, I move that we adjourn. Good night. Good night. Good night, Miss Good night. Good night. Wyatt, you know those Clantons aren't going to let us count those ballots without a row. Well, Dr. Holliday and uh, Mr. Gibbs and I, we've, well, we've kind of thought about that. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Roscoe's done already eight, and I ain't. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gibbs. Wyatt, you take him in the dining room, and I'll go roust out the cook. Thank you, ma'am. Sure is a nice lady, ain't she? Yep, she sure is. Even the outlaws trust her. Oh, Mr. Clanton, sir. Welcome to the Nugget office. Good evening. How many votes would we need for Judge Griscom? Well, I'd say uh, 500 extra would do it. 500? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Clanton. Uh, to, to be real safe. All right, 500. Would you like to see the editorial I'm running? No, no I'm too busy. All right, sons, let's get at it. All right, we're ready to go to press. And yeah, so's the nugget. 
You write that piece we were talking about? There it is. Yeah, this is fine. The people need to be warned about election fraud. It is a felony. Well, I don't think that'll stop the Clintons, Wyatt. You think we stand a chance? This time, yes. Old man Clanton, he's so used to stealing elections in Tombstone, he'll be careless. I think you and Fred White should have some more deputies. Shotgun Gibbs is a fine deputy. If I can just talk Dr. Holliday into helping us, we'll be all right. I wonder if you're right about not having a deputy at each polling place. Mr. Clum, you know elections. Just because an election is stolen doesn't mean it has to stay stolen. Right way. But I kind of think we're just whistling in the dark. Good night. Good night, John. Appointing ten of you election judges, one to a polling place. Well, the rest of the boys be here, Papa. Well, I told them to drift in five or six at a time. You, Finn. Yes, sir. You keep an eye on Herb and see he don't come snooping around. He better not. You go with Finn. He might need help. Uh, sure, Papa. Well, Circuit Judge Griscom. Why, sure, Judge. How many ballots you want? Just one, young man. Only one? Yeah. How's the election going, Judge? The people will speak, sir. I uh, hope you voted for yourself. That, sir, is impertinent. Good day. That old hypocrite. You already voted twice before this. <laughs> Here you go, Doc. You're doing fine now. Just one more great big gulp of coffee. Go and drink it up. No, sir. No, sir. I'll show you how to wake a man. Look, Doc, I need you. There's going to be trouble as soon as the polls close. What's the fighting all about? Well, uh, never mind, never mind. Don't tell me. I'm practically ready. Let's go find the shoot match. Thank you, boys. Well, this is the last one, Miss Nellie. Thanks, sir. I'll sure be glad when this is over. Me too. The count doesn't start until after supper, you know. But maybe you better go get Wyatt Earp. Oh, shucks, Miss Nellie. Nobody's going to come in here and bother these ballot boxes. All right. All right, boys, pick them up. Easy, Judge. Just put a couple on the table, the rest up there on the floor. Now, you just appoint me special ballot counter along with Tim Riley there. Well, didn't Herb try to stop you? We never saw hiding the air of Herb, Judge. I think the coward's found himself a place to hide in. Oh, hush up. Now, stations, everybody. You two stay here. We've got a lot of votes to count. Get at it. Come on. Stairs. Shotgun and I, we'll take the file out to the roof. Check your watches. 
You allow us exactly five minutes to get to Clinton's window. Doc, you rap on the hall door for you to rock us. That'll be our signal. And if there's a guard on the second floor? You take him if Clinton won't let you in. We'll open the door for you when we get inside. What about them guards downstairs? Just have to worry about them after we throw down the ballot boxes. Don't try to catch them while they put straw in the wagon. Got them all open, boys? Yeah. Ooh, it's too many to count. We just make a rough estimate. Well, now, wouldn't it look better if we had an accurate count, Mr. Clanton? Well, what do you care how it looks? Plum's papers say we stole the election anyhow. Uh, see, I figure about 89 ballots for Griscom and maybe uh, 14. That's enough for Spicer in this precinct. Who is it? Doc Holliday. Well, this ain't no poker game, Doc. Go away. Let me in. I want to talk to you. Go on. Get away. I'm busy. Open up this door. You can't lock it in my face. All right, hold it, Doc. I told you the old man didn't want you. Open the door. Stop him. Let Doc in. I don't want any more shooting. This won't work, Herp. I got ten good boys downstairs. It'll work. Over against the door. Not a step we don't. Mr. Gibbs? You want to stand up alive or be propped up dead? You watch him, Doc. We'll take care of the ballot boxes. Spicer? Spicer? Driscoll? Spicer? You know, Wyatt and Mr. Gibbs should be back by now. Well, they're taking old man Clanton and Griscom to jail. Well, Spicer is the man who ought to be here. He'll be riding in any minute now. Let's finish checking these ballots against the vote list. Griscom? Spicer? Court will rise. Circuit Court, Pima County, now in session. Judge Spicer presiding. Marshal, bring in the prisoners. Yes, sir. Bring them in. All right, boys, march right in. Mr. Clinton. You'll take off your hat, sir. Charges, Marshal. Election fraud, Your Honor. Mr. Clanton and his son stole the ballot boxes. Or their hired hands stole them. And I caught Mr. Clanton and Judge Griscom counting fraudulent ballots. If the court please. Yes. My clients plead not guilty and ask to be admitted to bail. Bail will be $10,000 each. Well, I ain't paying it. This big galoot voted 10 times himself. You ain't arresting him. Is that true, Marshal? Yes, sir, it's true. Mr. Gibbs voted ten times. And I have here the bribe money and the phony credentials he accepted from the Clanton Cowboys. Mr. Gibbs was acting under my orders as a special deputy. I see. Mr. Clanton, you will pay the bond ordered by the court or go to jail. For how long? Oh, it may take three or four months for the prosecution to prepare its case against you. Three or four months? Uh, the bonds will be posted, Your Honor. Today? Well, uh, uh, yes, of course, today. Good. 
Marshal, take these men to jail until that bond is posted with this court. Why, you pasty face. Please, pasty. Mr. Cladden, that won't do any good. Uh, Marshal, if you please. Always a pleasure, Your Honor. Mr. Cladden. Court is dismissed. This is a new day for Tombstone, Mr. Gerd. Never thought I'd live to see it. Too soon to celebrate. Table of water, Roscoe. Oh, I always tell Roscoe good night, Roy. You run on along to Miss Nellis. I can't do that. You're a marked man. You took ten dollars and some very important papers from the Clintons, remember? You don't think they'd bushwhack me right here in the middle of town, do you? It's still their town. Down. Sure, sure. Count it, Finn. Hey, count it! I'm so plumb mad I can't see straight. About $2,000. That's for you all boys. But you gotta kill Shotgun Gibbs first. Right here? In Tombstone? Right here. And I'll tell you where he is. He's over in Pat McGinn's livery stable. Are you sure? He's in there. Curry and that mule. One more thing. Kill the mule, too. We'll get them both, Papa. <laughs> Let's go. Be too hard to kill a mule. <laughs> that ought to make Roscoe real happy. Well, let's move. We're set up in there. You're sure jumpy tonight. Here, hold these. A little more hay for Roscoe, and I'll be right with you. Got some boys and run for it. I ain't no running. This is no place to make a fight. I ain't no leaving Roscoe. Come out of there. Or burn alive. Yeah. Don't make a move, any of you. All right, drop your guns. Put up your hands. You two, come on. All right, pick up these men and take them over to Dr. Goodfellas. This one's dead. Take the others. Now move! Take him back to the lockup, Judge? Naturally. And no bond this time. He goes to jail for 10 days. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail.
Doc. Put that gun away. Want to take Mayor Randall and Mr. Clark alive, remember? Well, if they're in the Alhambra, you can bet they're going to have their bodyguards with them. Well, just wing them if they go for the guns. Wives, if you think you're going to take the mayor and the biggest real estate thief in Tombstone without any shooting, you've been drinking the wrong stuff. Now, you take the devil's advice just once, huh? All right, Doc. Well, there's a picture of a, shall I say, scantily clad woman on the wall behind the bar. And as soon as you make your dramatic announcement that you're going to take Randall and Clark, I advise shotgun here to blast away at the lady. Such a sacrilege will stun every man in the room. Do you think Mr. Gibbs could bring himself to shoot? Well, a real lady? Of course not. One that ain't decent? You bet I'll shoot. Yeah, I know, but I'm still a little worried. Don't you worry about a thing. Spicer issued the warrants, that I know. But I doubt that Earp will have enough nerve to serve him. I'm not in here anyway. Mayor Randall, Mr. Clark, I have warrants for your arrest. All right, gentlemen. Let's go see the judge. Come on. Gives you animals, boys. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Wyatt had only an honest judge in a good newspaper, the Epitaph, and the Citizen Safety Committee backing him in Tombstone. They were steadily outmaneuvered by a gang of political boodlers known as the 10% ring in Tucson. But Wyatt refused to believe the weight of the odds against him. You can't fight City Hall, as any politician will tell you, but Wyatt was going to fight if it cost him his life. court will hold you both for trial. Mr. Clark is common thief and swindler. Witnesses have testified that you sold them vacant lots that had already been sold to other buyers. The official complaint will be land fraud. Yeah. Order. Order in this court. Mayor Randall, you will stand trial for malfeasance in office. Testimony has shown that you were in of all of his deals. Your Honor, I ask that these men be admitted to bail. They may be. $10,000 for Mr. Clark. Monster It'll be $15,000 for you, sir. <laughs> Order! Order! Stay here, Finn. I'll do the talking. Now, Papa, you cool down first. I traveled 90 miles to get to Tucson and speak my piece, and then political bombers going to hear something. You put your hat on. You're growed up now. Yes, Papa. We're losing hold of the tombstone right now. Earp's got himself a newspaper run by John Plum. He's elected a dude judge named a Well Spicer. Now, what are we paying you 10% for? To get rousted around? What's more, them miners have got some kind of committee. They can turn out a hundred guns. Mr. And I Clark, can't... Please! How's that, Daniel? There's going to be a whole new deal in a few weeks. What new deal? Did you ever hear of Cochise County? No. Well, your part of Pima County is going to be a new division. It's to be called Cochise County. And conditions will be different. How different? New sheriff, different judge. You'll get rid of her? In time, yes. Time. Well, it has to be done legal-like. You want to send soldiers in with martial law? Oh, we're sending a mighty smooth fellow in to survey the whole situation for us. Well, now, what's wrong with me? I know the situation now. Yes, you're wonderful, Mr. Clanton, just wonderful. But uh, 
You aren't smooth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> I certainly ain't. <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> well, we uh, thought you would. Well, who is this new fellow? Oh, you'll find out in time. You'll just have to put up with these annoyances for a while longer. How much longer, Daniel? Oh, a few weeks. Now, you go on back to Tombstone and have a quiet laugh at those law and order fellows. We're going to have law and order to suit ourselves. And you? You'll be the boss of Cochise County. Well, now, that's the kind of talk I like. Here's your cut for this month, close on to 5000 That's the kind of talk we like. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to unload the luggage, then stable the horses, Charlie. Yes, sir. Don't tell me the hotel is that full. <laughs> no, Mr. B, and that's the hospital. In a tent? It's the best Miss Cashman can do. Shocking. I'll have to see what I can do. If you could, it'd sure be welcome, Mr. Bean. This is our hospital. Mine accident at the Lucky Cuss. Shaft caved in. Can't the mine owners do something about a real hospital? I talked about it, but that's all. I'm assistant to Governor Fremont. I might be able to do something about a decent hospital. Mr. Behan, let's discuss this further at dinner, shall we? Uh, be my guest, won't you? I'd be delighted. Fine, shall we say 6.30? 6.30. See you then. Mm. Take it easy, Jim. I'd smoke them myself if it didn't cause talk. <laughs> Dr. Goodfellow, sir. Thank you very much. As I was saying, I think I can get Washington to match whatever funds we raise. Allow me, sir. Thank you. Now, who should be on the committee for the new hospital? Well, Wyatt Earp, for one. Oh, yes, he's the famous marshal from Dodge City. Uh -huh. And Mr. Gerd to help with the miners. Mr. Klum, he's editor of the Tombstone Epitaph. Good, good. How much money will we need? $15,000 if we squeeze every penny. Well, then we should set the goal for $20,000. Excellent. Well, I doubt that we can pry Tombstone loose from even fifteen. Come in. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, Miss Nellie, I'm terribly sorry to have missed your big feast. That's all right, Wyatt. Come in. Uh, Mr. Earp, I'd like you to meet Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean is the uh, assistant to Governor Fremont. Oh, this is a real pleasure, Marshal. I've heard of your work in Wichita and Dodge City. Well, thank you very much, sir. Come sit down, Wyatt. I've got something to tell you. Good evening, Doctor. Hello, Wyatt. Wyatt, the most wonderful thing oh. has happened. Oh? We are going to have a new hospital. That is, we think we are. Well, that is good news, but... Uh... Mr. Bean's going to help us raise the money. We're going to try for 20000 Now, I think we can do it. Don't you think so? Well, maybe if I uh, stay out of it. <laughs> Here's to your good health, Wyatt. Well, let's drink to uh, the hospital first, shall yes. we? Yes, the right. new hospital. To the hospital. Please, Marshal, not with water. He usually drinks milk. Uh, there's nothing wrong with water. Well, here's to the hospital. The hospital? And to Mr. Bean for wanting to help us. Thank you. Just wait till you hear the news you of Bob. Shop, Finn. Now, you unload the buckboard and stable in horses. <coughs> well, now, what's that for? I'm just glad to see you back safe and sound. Oh, yeah. <coughs> now, wait till you see what I got. <coughs> right here, I got a present for you. What is it? Well, open it and see. I got to get this sand out of my ears. Oh, it's beautiful, Papa. It's just what I wanted. Cost me a hundred dollars. Uh, Go find me a drink, baby. All right. Oh, 
Uh, we're celebrating, Emma. You reckon you can keep a secret? Uh-huh. Well, the boys in Tucson give me more than I asked for. They're gonna whack a whole new county out of Pima. A new county here? Yeah. It'll take in Tombstone and maybe 10,000 square miles. The only thing I don't like about it is the name. Cochise, I don't like nothing about that name. Now, now, who's gonna boss this new county? They're sending in a real smooth fella to work with me. Of course, we'll elect some scallywags to hold office, but your papa, he'll be the boss. <clears throat> Tried to get him to name it Clanton County. You know what they said? It'll make folks jealous. <laughs> well, go on, put your watch on and see what it looks All like. Right. They'll go real good with this dress. Say. See, Papa? Uh -huh. They'll really notice this in town, huh? Now, daughter, you stay out of town. Things are really going to be popping there. Spicer and Clum and Herb, that crowd, their days are numbered, sis. Now, just how do you plan to do that? Well, uh, elections first, maybe. But I aim to take care of Herb myself. You mean bushwhacking? I ain't decided. Not while he wears a star, Papa. He won't be wearing no star. Promise the boys in Tucson to take it slow and easy. Yes, sir. When you're the boss of a whole county, you have to do things legal, sis. I figure to wait until we get that badge off of him. And then we'll make it look good and legal. He'll still be a U.S. Marshal. U.S. Marshal. Hey, I plumb forgot about that. Well... Maybe we'll still have to bushwhack him, see? Oh, Papa. Here come Finn and Ike. You get some rest, Papa. The food will be on soon. You had a big day yesterday? Yes, sir, I sure did. What, what makes you so happy? This. Read it. Well, it's from Governor Fremont himself, huh? He promises half the money to build the hospital. We'll get all of it. Miss Nellie is talking to the mine owners right now. Well, you sure did a good job, Mr. B. Say, do you mind if I uh, start calling you by your first name? It'd be an honor, Wyatt. You know, we sure need a honest political operator in Tombstone. You ought to come through here more often. Thank you, Wyatt. I might be around for quite a while. No, well, how's that? It's a long story. Come on in. to divide Pima County. Tombstone will be the new county seat for Cochise. And you can be the sheriff if you want the job. Well, I don't know that much about politics. How'd you find out about this? The Tucson people had to clear it with Governor Fremont. I was at his elbow. How about the sheriff's job? Well, they'd never elect me, Johnny. I, well, I'm an outsider. I could get you a temporary appointment. That would give you an opportunity to make a record with the voters. The trouble with you, Wyatt, you just don't think politically. You mean I uh, arrest the wrong people? No, no. But the way you handled the mayor, for instance, they tell me you humiliated him. Well, maybe. Not that I hold with grafting. But a man in public office shouldn't make any more enemies than is necessary. Well, how would you have handled it? Simple. I would have picked them up separately and at night. Oh, I'd still have to bring him to trial, Johnny. But of course. Marshall! And then... Marshal! Marshal! All right, don't gamble. Help me get him down. He did. 
Yeah, they jumped us nine miles out of Tombstone. But I recognize them. They raised their mask to get some air. Are you Wyatt Earp? Yeah. Well, just go out to the Charleston Roadhouse and look for a pony deal. Quieten, men. You better take a big posse. I better see Doc Goodfellow. Come on, we'll find him. Well, this is going to be a bad one, Doc. What's so bad about the Benson stage being held up? Happens every other week. You know a man by the name of Pony Deal? Yep. Well, he and three other men did it. Killed the guard. It's only natural for second-rate Clanton punks. You know the Charleston Roadhouse? I gambled there. Well, the stage was carrying mail. It's a federal charge. I want to try and take Pony Deal and the other men without a fight. I can dodge. We took him any way we could. Why, it's been chumming up with Johnny Ben. What's that got to do with it? You like him? I don't. He's kind of a slicker, ain't he? Ben had nothing to do with that stage. The point is that I don't the want any bloodshed. The point is, yet. Wyatt, that this country is injuring your brain. They won't fight. Pony Deal wouldn't hold himself up in the Charleston unless he wanted you to come and arrest him. They're setting you up for a bushwhack. I still have to go after. Come on, Mr. Gibbs. Shotgun, you wait till we get set, then you leave the horses away. sense into his thick head, Doc. He won't get ten miles in Clan country. You ought to be hanged, Pony. What for? Just because I gamble with you don't signify. A thief with any decorum would have hid out in the brush for a few days. Come on. Old man Clanton knows these parts a lot better than you do, Johnny Law. Dr. Holliday is guiding us. He don't know these mountains like he knows cards. So get on your horse. All right, all right. I'm only trying to save Doc. He's into me for about $90. Doc, you'll save money this trip. they'd be by this way. Give them a little more time. Hold him, Doc. Mr. Gibbs, what are the prisoners and the horses? Do a little scouting. Did you see anything back there? Yeah, some fresh horse tracks. We may run into some trouble at the Narrows. Yeah, that'll be a good place for it. What do you figure on doing? I swear Clanton doesn't know this trail, Wyatt. I think we're underestimating him. Let's put some gags on those boys.
Bend down here. Put your head down. Got a mighty bad in the neck. Mighty close to the carotid artery. Did you stop the bleeding? I don't think so. We better get him back to Tombstone. No, that's a bunch of darn foolishness. Let me up. All right, let's clear out of here. We'll leave the prisoners here. No, I ain't a going. Yes, you are. Come on. much of this now. Lost a lot of blood, Mr. Gibbs, but you're still alive. Well, there wasn't no reason for you to let them prisoners go. Uh, there wasn't, huh? I suppose I just could have put a tourniquet around your neck. I've been... Oh. Why, well, I've been shot a dozen times and I ain't dead yet. You don't know what this is going to cost you. You ain't never going to be able to explain why you let them killers go. Well, I can explain it to myself. You get something straight. I wouldn't trade your ornery hide for all the hoodlums in Arizona Territory. Thank you, boy. No, oh, no, thank me. No, sir, if I'd have lost you, Roscoe would have kicked me all the way out of town. Star or no star. out Foxby. He had an ambush planted on the least likely trail of Benson. You had to let the prisoners go? That's right. The shotgun was hit bad. He's over in the hospital now. Wyatt, you can't afford this politically. I know that. You just have to get yourself another sheriff. No. Blame it on Doc Holliday. Tell them he steered you wrong. I wouldn't do that if I was elected governor. You'd be the politician. Where does that leave you? I'll catch up with the Clinton boys one of these days. What's the matter? You aim to play along with Clinton? He has the power in these parts, Wyatt. Yeah, for now he has. But I have friends and guns, too. You be careful how you pick your side. This is for blood. up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his be told, long may his story be
four Clanton cowboys that killed the Wells Fargo guard. You turned them loose? Had no other choice. Ran into a Clanton ambush. Shotgun was hurt. You yourself said that he might have died. Yeah. Well, get a posse together. As many as you need to catch them. Doctor, those men are guarded by a hundred top guns. I'll not have amateurs killed, and they would be fighting the Clantons. What? Doctor? John. Wyatt doesn't want to use a posse. Is there any other way, Wyatt? Yes, sir. Go after him one at a time. You'll never make it alone. Doc, I don't want men to die backing me up. Well, that's very commendable, Wyatt. It does your credit, but it's uh, quite unrealistic. I'm going to run an editorial asking for volunteers for a posse. Well, I can't stop you, but I'm going to get those killers my way. Wyatt, you're a fool. Now, you listen to me. You take a posse out there, you're going to have a running gunfight for miles. You can count on at least a dozen men getting killed or wounded. and legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Wyatt's refusal of the citizen's posse threatened to get him into serious trouble. No peace officer on the frontier could afford to let prisoners escape, and Marshal Earp had to recapture four men guarded by a hundred guns. Wyatt must do it alone or lead a big posse into battle with the Clanton gang. And he couldn't know the infamous 10% ring at Tucson had ideas of their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. You haven't told me the idea yet, Ben. Drag a man all the way to Tucson. You'll be told, Mr. Clanton. Dan Pretty and the boys are waiting. They want to talk to you first. Hmm. Well, I ain't surrendering for no necktie party in Tombstone. Worst idea you fellas come up with yet, and let me tell you... Hold on, Clanton. Keep your temper. Temper? I'm as mad as a Gila lizard with a bullet in his tail. All right, I'm ready now, to... that'll do. Sit down and listen. Drag a man all the way to Tucson. Uh, Washington and Governor Fremont have signed the order creating Cochise County. Let me see them papers. You'll have to surrender your boys. After all, we can't have a scandal in our new county the first week. I told you I wouldn't let my men hang. They won't hang. They won't even get a jail sentence. Well, why don't you say so? What we're trying to tell you is they're going to be fine. You have our word for it. You wouldn't doubt our word, would you? Well, <laughs> you never lied to me yet, Daniel. I'll tell the boys to turn themselves in. <laughs> fine. <laughs> <coughs> oh, uh, ask Johnny Bean to step in, will you? Good morning, gentlemen. You've been made sheriff of Cochise County. Ah. Uh, it went through. Yeah, I told you it would. How many witnesses is Wyatt Earp against the Clanton Cowboys? Just one. Jake Devers, the stage driver. Where is he? Under guard in a hotel. You see to it that he doesn't testify. But, gentlemen, are you asking me to... Oh, shut up, Ben. You don't have to do the job yourself. How are the job done? Well, yes, sir. Gentlemen. Men wanted four Clanton cowboys murdered the guard of a Wells Fargo stage last week. Marshal Wyatt Earp will lead a posse to arrest these men. The editor of the Epitha has signed his name as first volunteer. All able-bodied men for law and order will sign their name. I'll sign mine. I'll sign too. Uh, that's okay. Well, I don't know. I, you know, this is not the back work. It's one of the things that's done the same thing. Hi, Wyatt. Well, hi, Johnny. Where you been? Tucson. Meet the new sheriff from Cochise County. Hey, congratulations. Well, you can hang on to this. You could have had the job. Oh, I doubt it. That 10% ring, they uh, wouldn't stand for it. You can still be my chief deputy. 
Well, I'll have to kind of think about that for a while. And by the way, there's your first job. Job? Yeah, Mr. Klum is organizing a posse to go after the Clanton gunman. Since Marshal White has no jurisdiction in the county, it'll be your duty as a new sheriff to lead him in. Oh, that won't be necessary. I've already sent word for Clanton's boys to give themselves up. You mean uh, Pony Deal and the others are just going to ride in here and surrender? It's all arranged. Let me buy you some coffee while we talk about the chief deputy job. I'll be glad to have one with you later, but right now I better tell Mr. Clum. No use in having a posse now. New coming. Yep. Now you say John Behan's going to be sheriff of this new county? That's right. And he's going to have the Clanton men surrender themselves. That's what he said. Well, it sounds rotten to me, White. I wonder where the fix is. Well, he couldn't have fixed Judge Spicer. No, that's true enough. He uh, talked to you about your legal status? Well, I turned down the job as sheriff. He offered me the job of his chief deputy. Well, that settles it. I'm going to call a meeting of the Citizens Protective Committee, White. Well, I've known Johnny Bean in Tucson. I knew him again in Prescott. Of course, he's ingratiated himself here by helping to raise the hospital fund. But I think he's a member of the 10% ring. So do I. You what? Well, I don't know, Miss Nelly. I think we ought to wait and see. Why, you're going to be his chief deputy? No. I'm not a deputy sheriff anymore. The only jurisdiction I have is in federal cases. Yes, that's right, isn't it? Then what can we do? I'd say we get Mr. Clum appointed acting mayor. Oh, no. Now, Randall is under charges of malfeasance. He left town yesterday. Then the other members of the city council can't object much if you, doctor, and Miss Nellie insist. That's right. I don't think they'll want to expose themselves. Well, now, wait a minute, Miss Nellie. That's, uh, that's nice of you to say, but... Uh, well, I'm a newspaper man, not a politician. I can't be mayor. John, this is an emergency. He'll only have to serve until we can hold an election. The idea is for you to appoint Wyatt, Deputy City Marshal, under Marshal White. Well, that's a good idea. It's more than just a good idea. It's our only defense against being. Well, I've got to get back to the office. I move the meeting adjourned. Uh, right. Just a minute, Doctor. I think uh, my appointment ought to be kept secret for a day or so. And if Bean is a member of the 10% ring, well, he may show his hand. I'm for that. Well, I agree. Right. Miss Nelly. Back to the hospital? Good. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Good night. Good night, Doc. Good night. Good night, Good night. 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 Good well, I've uh, decided against that, Johnny. Why? Well, you're a politician and I'm not. We, uh, well, I don't think we get along. How do you figure? You know, there's one thing you haven't told me. How come old man Clanton would surrender his boys to you? A lawyer advised it. They don't think you have a case. You agree with them? Well, it's your case. I wasn't sheriff when the killing happened. I'm just helping out. If you'd throw in with me, we could split $40,000 a year. Fees and bounties. That's a lot of money. Well, I better check on Doc. He's been in the poker game most of the night. See you later. Andy up, Gibbs. Where's your money? Most of us laying right there in front of you two fellers. Let's let him off the hook, Doc. Well, Doc and I has been whips on you. Three-handed poker always leads into temptation. Well, you wouldn't cheat me, would you, Doc? You bet your life I would. Well, if that don't take all. I'd cheat Wyatt, too, if he didn't know so much about poker. Speaking of the deacon. Lock it again. Well, gentlemen. Johnny Behan is our new sheriff of our new county.
You're joshing. No, nope. official. Is he wearing a gun? He said old man Clanton is sending pony deal and the others in to surrender. What's the fix? I don't know. We better get Mr. Devers over to another hotel. You're our only witness to the murder. We'll put him over at Miss Cashman's. Well, that'd be a waste of energy. I'll go shoot Johnny Bean myself. That isn't going to help. I never did like Bean. This is the time we got to go start shooting, Wyatt. I've told you that and shotguns told you. We should have killed Pony and his boys without trying to bring them here for a trial they don't deserve. Now, wait a minute. No fool's play, Doc. Bean's wearing a star this time. That's right, Doc. They'd hang you for sure. Maybe I can insult Johnny into drawing first. No, they'd still hang you. Well, maybe I was wrong about being. We could have misjudged him. It ain't likely. Here comes Pony and his boys. There's only one reason they'd surrender to Bean. Are you satisfied now he ought to be killed? He isn't worth hanging for. Mr. Gibbs, we're going to move Mr. Devers. I ain't a scared, Wyatt. Well, I am. Doc, you give my hand. I want to talk to those Clintons. Well, man, don't say anything out here. Inside, quick. I want to know, has Devers been killed yet? Not so loud. Old man Clanton told us you'd have him killed by now. I know, I know, Pony. You wait in here. You've got nothing to worry about. You'll be told the whole thing later. All right. But it better be good. Oh, Wyatt. I just locked up the men you were after. Thank you kindly. Any objection if I talk to him? Not at all. Help yourself. must have known you'd hang. Somebody promised you an easy sentence or an acquittal? We don't tell you what our lawyers are going to prove. I see an alibi. Well, I guess that could be rigged. I wish you luck. Well? They've rigged an alibi. Would you do anything about that? Great Scott, why would I? I'm trying to believe in you, Johnny, but you got those boys in here too easy. Maybe they do have an alibi. The stage driver could have been mistaken. No, he couldn't. They didn't even bother to keep on their masks. You trying to get me mixed up in this? I did you a favor when I persuaded old man Clanton to send those fellows in. Why would Clanton do you a favor? Lots of reasons. I'm the sheriff now. I collect taxes. This is a new county. The old man doesn't know how he stands. And I won't take an insult from you or anyone else. Well, if the shoe fits, Johnny, you call me out. What good would that do? You're faster with a gun. But if you killed me, they'd hang you. Look, I tried to make you my... Chief Deputy. And I tried to be friends, Wyatt. I tried to. I needed friends in this town. Everybody rise. Circuit Court of Cochise County, now in session. Judge Spicer presiding. Order in the court. Mr. Bean, bring in the prisoners. The 
You men are charged with the murder of Tony Briscoe, a Wells Fargo guard. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Mr. Earp, I believe you have an eyewitness. Yes, sir. They're bringing him over from the hotel. Cat shot our only wit. Now you could have just winged him. He might have been able to tell us who hired him to have it done. It would have cost him his life to do it, just as it cost Jake Devils. Well, now we haven't got a case. You better toughen up, Wyatt. This is a shooting town. I've done the best I could, Wyatt. I called to him to halt. Besides, it ain't easy to wing a man with a 10 gauge slug. Well, what's done is done. I'll have to go tell Judge Spice. Take care of him. Our witness, Mr. Devers, has just been murdered. And his guards killed the murderer. But if the court will grant a continuance, I'm sure I can find the man or the men who had this done. He never had no case against us. And now he admits it. Sit down. Do you have any information which might lead to the men who hired the murderer? Not right now, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Mr. Earp. The court cannot hold anyone without reasonable evidence. It is this court's unpleasant duty to dismiss the case. <laughs> Johnny Bean. Oh, with that fancy new office of his in the courthouse, I reckon. Mr. Gibbs, it is my considered judgment that Johnny Bean hired that killer. Yeah, mine too. But we can't hardly prove that. This is my judging, jury. You go tell Johnny Bean that I'm going to shoot him on sight. Yeah, you just try that and they're going to hang you. Yeah, I know. I know. They'll hang me. I haven't got much time left anyway. I don't know a better way for a man to die. Doc, you're a mite sad. Yes. I'll clear that up right now. Oh. It's just like clear, cool water running through a slightly fevered brain. Mr. Gibbs, you're a man of the frontier. How long do you think it'll be before Bean hires another gun to bushwhack wired? Yeah, it's got me worried, Doc. That fella today had one of them magnifying sights on his rifle. Picked off poor old Jake right betwixt us. Mr. Gibbs, we're wasting precious time. We'd better get Johnny Bean out of this world right now before I have another coughing spell. Now, why it ain't going to favor you killing him? We'll present Deacon Earp with a fait accompli. A fait of what? Fait accompli. That's French for killing first and telling Wyatt later. Well, are you going to present the challenge, or do I have to expend precious time? No, no, you just keep your seat. I'll go tell that runny hog. Mr. Gibbs, you're a prince. A prince of royal blood, sir. <laughs> It's too bad. Oh, it's worse than too bad. Well, all we can do now is try to link John B in with a 10% ring. Here's your deputy marshal's badge. Pin it on. Well, there's no point in warning Johnny what we suspect. 
We'll just let him get overconfident. He'll keep us hidden for a while. Yeah, well, that's right. What? You better come quick. What's wrong now? Doc and Johnny Bean are going to have a shootout over in front of the courthouse. Now, I favored it at first, but the more I got... Oh, that feller sure can move, can he? Come on out, Sheriff. I want to see the kind of peace officer the ring sent to Tombstone. Bill, I said come out and come here. Now, just a moment, Dr. Holliday. I want the witnesses to observe that you're drunk and you challenge me to a gunfight. I'll give you the first shot. You draw first. No, Doc. Go on inside. I'll cool him off. You'd better. If he shoots at me, he'll hang. And you'll be dead. That's a fair exchange. He means it. Go on inside. I want him arrested for threatening me. I'm an officer of the law. Get inside like I told you. Stay there and shut up. All right, but I want the records to show that I didn't fear him. Doc, you need some sleep. You regret this to your dying day. All right, all right. He's thrown in with the Clantons. We can't prove that. Deacon and Tombstone, you can't prove anything. You just shoot on a reasonable suspicion. Deputy Town Marshal, Mr. Clanton. Now, you and your son are going to jail. On what charge? Shooting at a peace officer and galloping horses down Allen Street. Well, I ain't going. No? No. Let's go. All right. Then what happened, Wyatt? Well, in Judge Spicer... Find him $50 a piece, sentenced him to a night in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, a $50 fine certainly isn't important, but that night in jail, that, that's wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> Clanton's loose? I had no choice. Their lawyer came in with a writ of habeas corpus. What do you mean you had no choice? They were sentenced by Judge Spicer. You could have kept them for 24 hours. You know that. All right. I know that. And I know something else, finally. You belong to the Clantons and the 10% ring. Mr. Bean, among other things, you're a pipsqueak and a weakling. You can't talk to me that way. Why not? I'm the sheriff. You'd better be careful. No, you be careful. Now, you've gone too far today. You had my witness killed, got Pony Deal released, and now you let my prisoners go. Three victories in one day. That's too many for a new sheriff. Now, don't you ever give me proof or I'm going to toss you in jail. And don't go for that gun. In your honor, my trigger finger just might slip. up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told.